Hello. Uh, I'm gonna put my glasses so I can see you guys. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, just to introduce myself quite quickly, um, I'm Celine. I was born in Senegal. I grew up in France. Um, been working in HR and talent acquisition for the last seven years uh, in London, Paris, and f in Barcelona for the last uh, for the last nine years. But I had a break and did a little bit of sales. I've been doing mainly recruitment, talent acquisition, and I dive into everything that has to do with talent development, uh, career management, and obviously um, inclusion and diversity. Being myself, uh, as you can see, a, a beautiful black queer woman in the, in the corporate environment, obviously you notice something, so I dive into it because I wanted to understand a little bit why the structures that we have in the corporate world were as they are, and I started getting into it four years ago, and now applying it to the companies that I work with, so let's go. So, gender diversity, diversity in general. Um, everybody agrees on it, on theory. Um, now you will rarely find a company that does not say that gender diversity is an objective. In theory and in practice, it's a little bit more tricky, isn't it? So how do you act toward gender diversity? How do you make sure that the action that you take are visible? And how do you make sure, most of all, that people follow you? Um, DEY, uh, or diversity, inclusion, and, um, and equity, is a journey. And in this journey, the most difficult part is to make sure that people see through change uh, in real time. Um, so you want uh, those actions to be um, strategic goals that works toward uh, company, company objective and not only some nice work that look good on your LinkedIn page, isn't it? So today I want to talk about how you can take actions toward gender diversity through ambassadors. The first one being your leadership team, the second one your talent pool, and the third one your colleagues, your team itself. Ooh, I'm nervous. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but first of all, I want to talk about um, why we are talking about gender diversity specifically. Because gender affects your work life still today in 2022. In 2022, being a woman still means being paid up to 20% less than your male counterpart, still means being promoted 40% less than your male counterpart. And it still means being more vulnerable to crisis, unemployment, as we've all seen during the COVID um, situation. At the same time, we know that companies with gender diversity are 21% more performance. Companies with women in leadership position are up to 20% more profitable. And companies that are diverse are better at taking decisions, are better um, at acquiring new clients or new markets, and are better at retaining and attracting um, talent. Um, and those disparities are even more marked in certain sectors, uh, as tech, as most of you know, uh, science also. And this journey, you need to surround yourself with strong relays that are your ambassador, and that's why I want to, to dive into today. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a lot of those interludes. <laughs> so, um, the leadership team, this is the first ambassador you need to bring on. Why that? Because those are the people that are able to do significant change in terms of structure, in terms of cultural shift. Uh, you want them to understand that gender diversity is a business driver, is a performance driver. And I think that the role of HRBP in this situation is very important and very critical because this is where you will be able to explain how gender um, is a business driver and would you be able to get commitment. What commitment means? It means commitment to policies that enhance family. Uh, it means commitment to promote more women. It means commitment to retain and train women talent. And those um, cultural shifts need to be set in the strategical goal of the company. And this is why I want to talk about mindset. Um, the another part of bringing your um, leadership team with you is to do uh, women-centered mentorship programs. Uh, study shows that one of the biggest blockers of women entering the workforce in certain places is the lack of women role models. So if you have women in leadership position, first of all, congrats, um, you can do a training and a mentorship program. If you don't have women in leadership position, you can use, obviously, your male 
leaders with the right training. You can use universities and you can use all those fantastic uh, resources, communities that are doing a fantastic job uh, promoting women mentorship. <sighs> okay, um, the next part um, of your ambassadors are uh, your talent pool. Obviously, um, if some of you are recruiters and do talent acquisition, you've all heard the, the famous, of course, of course we want to hire women, but there is just no candidates. Or, uh, yes, we, we want them, but they don't have the skills. And myself, I've been confronted to these arguments uh, more time than I would like to, uh, and I decided to test it. So what we did um, at Remy Robotic was to decide to interview any female identified person that came to our technical roles, regardless of their skill or experience. And what we did is coach them, give them feedback about their CV, give them feedback about the skill they needed to develop in order to join the team. And by doing so, we position ourselves as a champion or coach, and we were able to not only get people coming back to us with the right skill that they developed, but also people coming back to us with amazing referrals, most of them females, because people talk with the people that look like them, so that's, that's a very good thing. And obviously we were able to boost our employee branding to our women, so it was really, um, I, I think, one of the best things we did in terms of recruitment. Um, the second part of working with the talent pool is to not be afraid to go to uh, woman-oriented networks because, you know the saying, it's better to go to a, a river full of fish than to a sea full of none. So um, don't be afraid to go to uh, women recruitment events, go to women hackathon. If you have a big company or if you have the capacity, organize your own. It's going to be super, super helpful. Uh, to illustrate the last part um, of the ambassador, which is your team itself, I want to use a personal example. Um, I work in a company that does robotics for the food industry, which means that I work with um, AI and robotic engineers, as well as cooks and, and chefs, which are both sectors that are not really known to be the most gender diverse, to be honest. Um, and when I, we started our DAI journey, um, I had an exit meeting with one of our female um, partners, and she said that she was leaving the company because she felt that she couldn't grow in the company because she was a woman. She felt that some part of the company were really traditional, meaning macho, let's, let's call it as it is, um, and that it created um, um, a dissociation between how we presented ourselves as this super cool modern company and this glass ceiling that some women were living in the day-to-day -day life of the department. Um, so art feedback, but it is true and you have to be able to, to listen to it. So I said, thank you, <laughs> good luck, and, and we went to work. Um, what we decided, the first thing we did was to invite all the women in the company and ask them to participate to a brainstorming session to get some feedback and to understand a little bit better how the structure of the team were and where they felt that they were lacking opportunities. Um, following that, what we did is to create an internal a buddy program where people can talk about how uh, gender affected them, men or women, and uh, we kept uh, regular gender meetings, only for women or only for men or only for X type of identifying people to talk about those type of subjects. I think it's really important to be able to, to keep on talking about that. The next thing we did uh, with our colleagues is to change our performance review to not only look at the performance on an individual level, but also to look at the structural level. And by doing that, we were able to create more opportunities for women in particular, because we were able to identify where, uh, ooh, this is going fast, where, um, where uh, we were missing uh, opportunities, where we needed to create new roles, and, and where uh, we needed to change roles. So to conclude, there is a lot of uh, strategy that you can put to add to our gender diversity. But to do so, you need to bring some ambassadors. The first one is your leadership team that are ready to put the policies in place. The second one is um, your network that's gonna work for you and with you. And the last one is your team being able to challenge the organization and to create new opportunities for everybody. Thank you. Thank you.